everyone, my name is Ro. I'm David. And this is Sweetie. Mwah, yes, thank you. And we posted a video Sweetie. a couple days ago that we shared a bunch of stories with you guys of the rudest RVers and other <laughs> rude encounters that we had on the road. And we have quite a few more. And you guys told us that you really want to hear more of our stories. So we're gonna share five more stories with you today. Our first story is when we were camping off of Lake Ponderé in Idaho. Uh, it was at a fish and wildlife managed spot and we could only be there for three days, uh, but it was right on the shore of the lake. And if you don't, if you've never heard of that lake, it's pretty big and just so beautiful. And yeah, we were almost right on the shore. Our front door was looking right out on the water and we had this glorious view of the lake. And we had only been here for about a day and there were a ton of camping sites in this whole area and there were even a lot of camping sites that were much closer to um, the lake and um, like after the first day of being there, uh, a truck camper pulled in. It was just two guys with a truck and a truck bed camper and they parked right in front of our trailer, just right between us and the lake. Uh, and they were so close to us that if we would have rolled our awning out, it would have contacted their rig. And we just thought to ourselves, what? Why would you park here of all of the places? Like there were probably 20 places to camp. And like I said, some much better places, even closer to the lake, but they chose to just cut off our view. And we were like, we were like um, thinking about like maybe saying something when they were setting up, but we were like, you know what? This is public land. We don't own it. And but you know, they're allowed to camp wherever they want and they just so happen to choose this one. We're only here for two more days because we could only camp three days total. So whatever, it's not a big deal. But yeah, it just like really blew our minds that they just wanted to camp for whatever reason, right there, right next to our rig. We could hear them talking. They could hear us talking when they were in their rig and we were in our rig. And, um, but you know, the good thing is, is that they only stayed overnight and they were gone the next day. So we were glad that we didn't like start a ruckus or anything or ask them to move or anything. It all worked out in the end anyway. The second story happened near Las Vegas. And some of you may remember that our last video, we also had a different encounter near Las Vegas, so this is a second encounter. Now we're two for two campsites that we've ever stayed in near Las Vegas where something weird has happened. Um, but we were camping just northwest of Las Vegas in the Desert Fish and Wildlife Refuge. Um, I think the place is called like Corn Creek or something like that. And there's a little visitor center for the Desert Fish and Wildlife Refuge area. Um, they've got all sorts of displays and stuff that you can wander around in, as well as a massive picnic area and tons of parking. It's all paved all the way up to that spot. But we were camped about a quarter mile away, down and around this very, 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 very bumpy gravel road. I mean, the, the rocks were like this big. It was straight up wasn't even like regular gravel. The rocks were this big and it was just the whole road was covered in them um, as if it was giant gravel or something. So it was a really, really rough um, drive to our campsite, which was the first one. This was when you could camp there. You can't camp there anymore. Now it's just a day use area. And we had been there probably about a week and we could camp 14 days. And I was doing some laundry outside in my pajamas. It was just a lazy day. That's what you do when you're in the middle of nowhere all alone. You do your chores in your jammies. <laughs> And I was outside doing my laundry by hand because we don't have a washer and dryer. And all of a sudden this um, minivan, we can see it leave the de Desert Fish and Wildlife Refuge and like drive down and come towards us. And we're just like, well, they're just going to go to the next campsite because obviously this campsite's occupied. There's a big trailer in it and it's a tiny campsite. And nope, they pull right into our campsite. They park right next to us and they get out and they unload like six kids as well as a baby stroller and like three or four adults and they just plop down at our fire ring like 10 feet from us and start having lunch they left the picnic area to come invade our campsite which is first come first serve and it was already occupied so therefore it was serving us so they were second come not serve that's how that works anyway um I was actually really upset because I was like, what is happening? They, I hope they don't set up camp here. Like, what's going on? And 
I was a really non-confrontational person and I ended up not saying anything to them and about an hour and a half, maybe two hours later, they decided to just pack up and leave after they finished their lunch, obviously, but that was really weird and very rude and I don't want that to happen again. That's what- don't do that. Don't do that to people, okay? <laughs> this next story is probably the worst one that has happened as far as like encountering a really rude person while on the road. Uh, and it is our crazy Cheryl story, if you've heard it before. Uh, we actually made an entire video on this encounter. So if you want the complete full story, you can go ahead and click that link. I'll also drop one down in the description below so you can watch the whole video. I'll give you a condensed version though right now. Basically what happened is we were in Oregon in the Fremont Wynema National Forest uh, and we were camping there sort of as a base camp to visit uh, Crater Lake National Park. And while we were camping in the morning, um, this white SUV just starts coming down the forest road that we were staying off of and there was no one nearby us. We were the only people uh, that we knew of in the entire area camping in, in the, that whole area. And um, so, the lady driving the um, SUV pulls up right behind our rig, gets out, and uh, comes up to the door and just says, essentially, uh, excuse me, you're not allowed to camp here. And Ro and I were like, what? And so I open the door and I start talking to this woman and she is very adamant, very frustrated and angry that we're in this we're camping here. And she's just like, no, you cannot camp here. You need to leave right now. And we knew that we could camp there because we had checked the uh, vehicle use map um, or motor vehicle use map for that national forest area. And it had specifically stated that camping, it showed on the map that camping was allowed in, uh, you know, right off of this forest road. And so we told her that and she was like, no, because there's the fire dangers and uh, the, um, the uh, uh, the fire department has said that there's no camping in this area, and if you don't leave now, I'm gonna call them and uh, make them, have them come out and make you leave. And Ro was like, she was like getting super fired up over all this, and she was basically like, whatever, I'll call them right now because I know we can camp here. So she just pulls out her phone and calls the fire department, and they're just like, yeah, you can absolutely camp there. And first off, we don't even have like jurisdiction over that area, so we wouldn't be able to tell you you couldn't camp there anyway. And um and then like this is like this goes on for so long. We were like this lady was like screaming at us to leave, making up all these excuses about how there were like mountain lions in the area. She had just seen a mountain lion just like a couple days ago. She's like trying to scare us into leaving now once she found out that her like original threats wouldn't work. And we're like, we're just like, no, lady, you need to leave. Like, get out of here. We're not going anywhere. So she gets back in her SUV and drives up the uh, continues on her way up the forest road. And shortly after this lady left, the fire chief actually called us back on Rose's cell phone because like, you know, we had told them that this lady is like, I, just like so angry at us. So, so they were like worried about our safety. And uh, he was like, he asked exactly where we were and like 10 minutes later, the fire chief of the area showed up at our campsite and was just like, yeah, you guys can absolutely camp here. There's no reason you couldn't camp here. And he asked for some information on the lady and we like sort of described her and the type of vehicle she drove. And he was like, oh yeah, I know her. That's Crazy Cheryl. We call her Crazy Cheryl. And Ro and I were just like, you've got to be kidding me. Like this lady is like, so, I, I don't even, just, she's like this apparently all the time, and she's got a reputation in the area. You know, it was kind of one of those, like, areas where it's so small and so rural that everyone knows everyone. You know, the fire chief knows all about Crazy Cheryl, and he's like, and he just said, if she comes back and starts harassing you guys, call me, and we'll get the police out here or something, and we'll get her out of here and tell her to stop bothering you. And then after that, thankfully, we never heard from Crazy Cheryl again. She never returned to our campsite, and we stayed there like another week or so. We we stayed there the full 14 days, uh, and 
Uh, a lot of people in the comments on that video that we made about this encounter said that we should have got her on video, and we actually did. We just didn't really feel very comfortable showing someone else on video. I know there's a ton of videos like that on YouTube, but like, you know, we, we just weren't comfortable with that, showing someone that didn't know that they were being filmed. And we're actually really glad that we didn't share that because in the comments, people got like really like violent. They were saying like, I'm gonna camp there and if this lady shows up, I'm gonna shoot her and like stuff like that. Like people got really violent making death threats toward her and stuff. So we're actually really glad that we didn't uh, post any information on her, show her face, show her car or her uh, license plate, which we got all of that on camera. This next encounter that we had actually happened quite a few times at this exact same campsite. And this happened last year. So in 2020, we were camping near a town called Clay Ellum, Washington, up in the mountains of Washington. We were camped way up on the top of a mountain, basically. And there were a bunch of campsites up there. And we had one that was at the very end of the road and it had a really pretty view. There were other campsites up there. Ours was the only one that was occupied with us and the other ones were all empty, they all had a view too, and one of them had the, um, they had an entrance to a trailhead that led up to an even cooler view. So, lots of views up here. I understand that. Our campsite had an epic view, don't get me wrong, freaking magnificent, I loved it. But, <laughs> for many of you, you will, you will already know this, but when you're camping in a national forest, those campsites, all campsites, are first come, first serve. That means that if a campsite is occupied, you are not to enter it, it's being, it is serving somebody else, it's not serving you. You're technically the second person that's come, so it's not gonna be, anyway, you guys understand. So, we have occupied this campsite, it's not a very large campsite, and... Man, how many times did this happen? Five times while we were so up there? So many. So many times. Okay, so we were camping for 14 days like we normally do, and we had people come either really early in the morning or they'd come midday when we were hanging out outside. We had a group of friends camping with us for a couple days while we were staying up there, and people still walked through our campsite. And so what happened was people would park at, like, the end of the road where this campsite was, where we were staying in, and they would just park there, and then they'd walk through our campsite while we're hanging out to stand at the edge of our campsite and just see the view. <laughs> I don't know if these people were confused. I don't know if they thought that the campsite we were camping in was the viewpoint, like the hike that led to the viewpoint, but that's not the case. And we were never confrontational. We just like let it happen and was just like, that's weird. I wish people would stop doing that. The second person that ever came up, they literally pulled into our campsite, drove past our fire ring past our table that was sitting there to park next to our table and get out and look at the view right next to our RV. And it's just like, this was, we hadn't even gotten up yet. We were still in bed. So someone is waking us up in the morning coming into our campsite. It's a big no-no. Um, and I really wanted to, maybe I should have, I don't know. What do you guys think? But I wanted to on a couple of occasions go out and be like, hey, you know this isn't the trail, right? And this campsite's occupied and just like kind of let them know the trails actually starts at the next like if you go back one campsite the parking's right there for the trailhead to lead up and there's an even prettier view right there like this view is nothing compared to the view at the end of the trailhead for the viewpoint um but i didn't and <laughs> maybe i should have i don't know but we ended up having to resort to using our truck to block the entrance of our campsite but we still had people that would park on the other side of our truck and then walk in. Two videos ago that we put out, we talked about etiquette when camping in a campground, and one of the things that everybody agreed with us on is that you really shouldn't walk through people's campsites. You know, everybody's paying for those campsites. I understand that those are paid, but in the National Forest, that's public land, except if the campsite is occupied, it's no longer public to everybody. It's just to be used by that one person. So, when you're alone in the woods and someone then walks through your campsite, it almost feels like an even bigger intrusion of privacy because you're out there alone, you have a stranger walking through this campsite that you've been in for a couple days or so, and it can be just really weird and unsettling. I know one time, this is a different story, not super rude of a story, but we had someone walk through that was hunting and they had like guns on their back walking into the woods to go hunting and it was just, it can be a little unsettling alone in the woods when someone walks through your site. <laughs> And then our last story was a pretty scary one for us. Uh, we were camping on BLM land near Farmington, New Mexico, and our cellular signal there 
was, was really, really weak. Um, and we were trying to upload uh, gigabytes of data, you know, YouTube videos while we were out there and it just wasn't working. And so we decided that we needed to head into town, find a Starbucks to, uh, you know, get a coffee so we could use their Wi-Fi and upload our videos there. And so we set up our security cameras that we had at the time and we left to go into town. And the Starbucks was about a 45 minute drive away from our RV. And, you know, just like most times, we were the only ones out there. There was no one camping anywhere near us. Um, and so we got to the Starbucks. I opened my laptop and I started uploading the video and um, I forget who it was, Ro or I pulled out their phone and to check the security cameras. Now, like I said, this, the cell signal was super weak, but it was still enough for the cameras to work. They only use like kilobytes of data. Uh, and so they could still send the video information um, even though it wasn't, the cell signal wasn't strong enough to upload, you know, high quality YouTube videos. But uh, yeah, so one of us checks our phone, we're looking at the camera, and we're seeing that there's just something peeking out from the front of our trailer. Um, the camera was mounted to the rear driver's side corner of our trailer, sort of looking out over the front door area toward the front of the RV. And so, the the our like the roof of our RV was obscuring the whole image, uh, you know. But we could see something just peeking out from the front, and it was red. And we ask, you know, I, I'll just say like I asked Ro, "Is this a car? Is there a car in our campsite?" And Ro looks at it and she's like, "Yeah, that's a car hood." And we're like, "Why is someone parked directly in front of our trailer?" and just sitting there. We couldn't see anyone uh, because again, like just the way the camera was oriented, um, the front of our trailer was obscuring most of what was there. Uh, and then it like started to pull forward just a little more and like you, we then knew like 100% like, oh yeah, that is a vehicle. Someone is in our campsite and they're just sitting there, which is really sketchy. We're 45 minutes away. Uh, we didn't know what they were doing. Were they scoping our trailer out? Were they, you know, seeing if they, if they just sat there, if anyone came out or anything to see if like anyone was inside me, like, are they going to break in, uh, you know, and potentially harm our pets, steal our stuff, who knows? Uh, so we start freaking out. And so I get in the truck. I leave Ro behind to finish the upload on the video and I get in the truck and I just, you know, just start flying to get back to the campsite. And I just pull into the BLM land, get off of the highway onto the dirt roads and I'm heading in and Ro uh, calls me and she says they just drove away. Um, she could see the truck drive off down the road and uh, we also had an interior camera that um, was like at the back of our travel trailer on the inside facing all of this so we could like see our pets on the bed you know like sweetie that's usually where she sleeps when we're gone so we could see her and she was just sleeping she wasn't alert or anything um and so we knew, or we had been watching that too we knew they never tried to enter the rv or the travel trailer or anything um but yeah, I get back to the campsite, they're gone, and there's just a bunch of trash left behind, like uh, where the truck was parked. And we're like, what the heck? What happened here? What, like, again, were they scoping us out? Were, did they just pull in to our site just to eat lunch and then throw all their garbage? There was like a Ziploc bag, some Slim Jim wrappers, uh, and some other like napkins and paper towels and stuff that they had left behind. And we're just like, okay, this is freaking us out. We're getting a really bad vibe from this. And so I went back to the Starbucks. The video was finished. Our YouTube video had finished uploading. Picked Ro up. We went back and we just prepared to leave. We, we got everything ready. And then the very next morning, we just got the heck out of there because that whole situation really rattled us. And we didn't want anyone else coming back uh, and potentially harming us to steal our stuff. Uh, yeah, we just got the heck out of there. Well, that's it. Those are all of the rudest, weirdest, scariest uh, encounters that we've had with other RVers and campers while we've been on the road living full time in our travel trailer. Uh, we 
might have some more if we try and think really hard. I don't think we sure. do though. And you know, I really hope that none others pop up over the years. Oh you know, gosh. these situations, looking back on them, it's those situations that you can laugh at and be like, that was so weird. What the heck happened? What yeah. the heck were they thinking? But I don't want any more to happen ever again because some of them are really stressful in the moment. Very stressful for sure. But yeah, guys, <laughs> please share your stories yeah. of rude, weird, strange, frightening encounters that you've had while traveling. We would love to hear about them. We want to make sure that we're not the only ones coming across all these really strange and weird people. Yeah, like we're <laughs> magnets for this. Oh my gosh. But that's all for us. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. bye. Sweet Pete, say bye. Oh, 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 oh. Good girl. Good girl, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you, puppy. I love you too. <laughs>